Okay, we're going to have a quick look at uh, uh, Mendel's law of independent assortment. And it's exactly what, how it sounds. It, it means that the chromosomes can sort themselves out independently. And to start with today, we're just going to have a, a bit of a look at the structure of the chromosomes um, as a bit of a recap. Now we have here, these two chromosomes, they're a homologous pair. Uh, they're a pair of chromosomes that are exactly the same. They might be the number 3 chromosomes or the number 20 chromosome, but they both contain the same sort of genes and the same sort of ge genetic information, although they might be different versions. So when we say this... Um, we mean that on these chromatids here, um, some of the genetic information might have a particular gene here. That might be the gene for hair colour, and that's going to have a gene for hair colour. On the other chromosome, it might also have those particular genes, and these spots down here might all have the same sorts of genes. Now, when we're looking at these chromosomes, um, they're, they're both the same sort. So they're both, uh, let's say they're a number three chromosome. Um, let's have a look at a particular gene here or an allele for a gene and this might be for being tall. Now because this is a replicated chromosome because this chromatode here is are going to be exactly the same as the chromosome here, the chromatode, uh, the chromatids are going to be exactly the same with the same genes, that one is also going to have a tall gene on it. And similar over here, um, this one will draw with a, a small t to represent the short gene. Um, so we have a difference between the two chromosomes. And you can imagine that in other times during the cell cycle, the, no the chromosomes won't be in this replicated state. And what we'll have is we'll have, you know, I suppose, a, a chromosome looking at more like this with its uh, just single chromosomes and its little centromere in the middle here. Okay, so we can imagine it different at different times. So let's just have a look here how this actually happens during meiosis. And let's consider, uh, you know, a, a parent cell here uh, maybe having three homologous pairs. And we can see that there's difference in each of the homologous pairs. They have different genes on them. And I've marked a few example genes there in, in black. So that if this is the number one chromosome, this this, this replicated number one chromosome is different to this replicated number one chromosome. And likewise, the two number two chromosomes are different and the two number three chromosomes are different. Um, so we'll be considering, you know, which chromosome we're inheriting uh, during this process. So in independent assortment, it means that whichever number one chromosome you get, it isn't linked to whatever chromosome number two you get they sort themselves out independently. So let's have a look at an example here. So if during this first stage of meiosis, one of these uh, of these two homologous pairs goes to this side and one goes to this side, what independent assortment is meaning is that this one could go either here or here. It's totally unrelated uh, to whichever, where, whichever um, cell the, the number one chromosome, the green one went to. Okay, and likewise, this could either go here or here. It's totally independent to what the other chromosomes have done. Okay, so this means we can get lots of different combinations. We could go through and we could put all of the first ones there in the same cell. And you can imagine, like, with 23 different pairs in humans, there's lots and lots of different um combinations that we can get, an amazing number of combinations we can get just from those having 23 pairs of chromosomes. We could mix them up in a heap of different ways. Okay, good luck with uh, studying meiosis and it's a great introduction to genetics. Uh, that's independent assortment.